Probably the biggest surprise and lesson learned I had with the first Fortune 500 I worked with was the lack of preparedness. They just didn't have anything. And you would, when you look at a, a, a multi billion dollar company, you think, oh, they're going to have everything squared away. The guy's running the crisis department is probably going to know more than me. You know, what, what am I got myself into? Until you go in, you got your little pitch deck and you, uh, and then you start talking and you start seeing in their eyes that, oh, I am bringing up some things they may not have thought about, or I've simplified some processes that they made a little too complicated. And that's why it was becoming a burden for them to try and push whatever it was. Right. And so anyway, um, the crisis is that, you know, that I was focused on initially was safe travel abroad. That was one thing I had my own lessons learned that I felt were very valuable for civilians. Right. So I, last part of my career, I traveled the globe working pretty much solo alone I had switched from wearing body armor and night vision and kicking doors in over to wearing business casual, flying business class, and not working inside the theaters of war. Um, and so when you do that and you're actually conducting a mission, uh, awareness becomes more important than anything else, right? I started going, wait a minute, I'm, I'm kind of on my own. I don't have any, I don't have like a, a QRF or what we call a quick reaction, a quick reaction force is going to come rescue me if things go sideways. I'm truly on my own. And so doing that over and over again created this, this list of lessons learned. And then as I started to get out, I thought, you know what? If you're a journalist, let's say you travel alone, you meet with dangerous people, and then you report on it, right? And you stamp your name to it. <laughs> so they were the first ones I kind of went after because I felt like in light of Danny Pearl, who got his head cut off on YouTube, um, you know, journalists needed, you know, some really good best practices so that they could go out and conduct meets with a complete stranger, collect information and, and actually go home alive. Right. And so my first client ended up being the Wall Street Journal. Do you find yourself asking then and even today, like, who am I? Like the little bit of the imposter syndrome, who am I to be able to step into this? Or does that disappear as soon as you realize that the person you're across doesn't know what they're talking about? You know, the imposter thing still is there. I think it is for everyone. An entrepreneur who dives into new territory at any given time and, you know, they find themselves standing in a room with people who have been doing whatever it is for 20, 20 years of their life. Um, I think a little bit definitely exists. But once you actually get in front of them and you... I'm really good about saying, hey, I am not one of you. I'm actually something different, and that's what's going to benefit you. You know, I was the bad guy in every country I walked into. You are all good people, right? Doing good things. I was the bad guy. <laughs> so once you kind of say, hey, you are you and I am, and I and I am who I am, then here are my lessons learned from being the bad guy, from being the predator. And I think these things will actually benefit you. Um, you know, I'm not trying to be them and I'm not trying to teach them something that they already know. I'm just trying to give them tools that they can add to their toolbox. If you're ready to live a more rugged life, what does that mean? Less reliance on other people, more control, more freedom, and honestly, becoming a bit of a badass. Click on the link right over there to hear the full conversation that I had with Clint Emerson.